Hey, what's up everybody? Are you considering a new job market? Well, in this video, I'm gonna discuss a few ways that you can try to determine a better job market, specifically for cybersecurity jobs. Hey, how's it going everybody? Well, earlier today, I was looking online just at some articles and I happened to run across an article talking about uh, good job markets. Specifically, it was talking about the job market in Virginia as it relates to cybersecurity jobs. And I thought it'd be an interesting topic to just kind of discuss since I've actually relocated for some jobs before. So I have some experience and it's kind of an interesting debate. Um, but specifically looking at the article that I found, it's on a website called Dark Reading. So darkreading.com. And especially for cybersecurity, this is a really good website. It actually has a lot of good articles about trends and things that are happening in the industry and there's art, good articles every day you definitely want to sign up for an account just because it will only let you look at two articles per day if you don't sign up for an account but this was the article that i had found and basically it says that virginia currently ranks as one of the hottest states for cybersecurity professionals from a job opportunity and salary standpoint so I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, I've been to Virginia a few times and basically it, it goes through the different annual salaries. So for instance, for Virginia, uh, top spot for average salaries, 111,000. And uh, basically in Virginia, what there is is there's a lot of uh, defense and government type jobs, of course because the whole uh, DC metro area, the national capital region, so that whole Virginia, Washington DC, Maryland kind of corridor. And you also have a lot of other companies like Amazon and you know, high, high tech startup kind of companies that are in that area as well. So if we so if we keep kind of going through this article here and I thought this was pretty interesting too the biggest the biggest difference in salaries was New Mexico 106,000 so it was higher than uh, a lot of the other states And some of these states like Arkansas, Indiana, Wisconsin, and Wyoming don't even include information security analysts in their 10-year employment projections. So that's pretty interesting, especially since the industry is really changing and security and cybersecurity is becoming a huge deal. So it's, you know, it's really catching on in a lot of these places, a lot of these areas. As far as top five states, this article broke down so Virginia, Texas, Colorado, New York, and North Carolina. So North Carolina is another interesting one because uh, you have uh, the Research Triangle area. And if you're familiar with Cisco, for example, uh, they have uh, an office out there. Um, I know that Raleigh, North Carolina is really booming right now. Uh, Colorado, I actually used to live in Colorado. And uh, there's definitely a lot of tech jobs that are out there, specifically in Denver. You know, basically you have Denver and then Boulder, there's a lot of jobs. And then uh, Colorado Springs, you have a lot of military and government defense type of jobs down there as well. But, uh, and then it says New York having the highest average of 122,000, which if you've ever been to New York or you know anybody that lives in New York, if they live in New York City, that seems like that would probably be a pretty low number to survive, uh, even though people are doing it in general anyways. But um, I know a lot of the other areas in New York are more reasonable than like New York City. And then California currently has the most job openings for them. So with California, California is 
kind of one of those areas where a lot of people want to go there, especially, especially Silicon Valley, because you have a lot of your startups, you have your Google, you have your, you know, your big tech names that are there. And California really is just so expensive that you have to just make so much money in order to survive, really. If you've ever done any kind of research on California, it's, it's crazy expensive out there. Um, I was in an Uber ride one time where my Uber driver was saying you had to make something like 150, 200,000 just to actually have a decent standard of living, which is just crazy. So I'll, I'll put this link in the description so you guys can check it out as well. But, um, and then, oh, this was the other last thing that was interesting as well. In Puerto Rico, the average is only 42,000, which obviously compared to a lot of the other places, that's significantly lower. So that's pretty, pretty crazy, uh, especially when you're looking at just overall numbers. So a lot of this kind of stuff didn't seem to be around when I was first moving around for different jobs. But actually, like I said, I used to live in Colorado and it was definitely on the increase as far as people living there. So something else that you can look at as well that is new, it's called CyberSeek. And if you just go to Google, you can search CyberSeek but cyberseek.org and basically they have this interactive map that you can go to and so the interactive map is really interesting because you can actually pinpoint different states and locations that you want to look into and you can actually see the job titles and certifications that people are looking for so that's pretty cool. That can help you really kind of hone what you're looking for. You go to the map and you can see that it has the different colors based on how many job openings there are. And then you can actually just hover over and it'll show you as well. And if you click on one, then you can see down here that it narrows everything down more. So it gives you the top job titles. So different kinds of jobs that you can get out there. It also shows you the location quotient. So like in California, it's the average 1.0, right? And then you can hover over the little thing and it shows you. This is the concentration of cybersecurity job demand in a specific location. So it's equal to basically the national average. And then you can also see the supply of cybersecurity workers. So you can see you know, how many people are in cybersecurity compared to the amount of jobs that are out there. And again, California is pretty much right at the average. And then it gives you the total job openings as well. But then if you scroll down here, you can also see some other kind of information. So this nice area, if you're familiar with what NIST is, Basically, they have this nice, uh, nice cybersecurity workforce framework. And basically, what it does is it will break down different types of cybersecurity jobs based on the responsibilities that are generally in those. Okay? So, like protect and defend, or oversee and govern, so like more management oversight kind of jobs operate and maintain, and different things like that. Um, and then you also get the different types of certifications that they're looking for in a lot of these jobs, right? So you can see the holders and then the openings requesting certifications, right? So for instance, like Security Plus, a lot of people have Security Plus in California, and there's only 2,400 or so jobs that are posted that want Security Plus. And so with these, these can be helpful. I mean, these are pretty, pretty generic 
and common kind of certifications that you're going to see in a lot of jobs, specifically for cybersecurity. Uh, looking at like the, the GIAC or the GIAC, you can see that, I mean, that basically with these certifications, the GIAC ones, there's a whole bunch of different ones. There's ones on like penetration testing and forensics and, you know, all kinds of different categories on this stuff. So it's a little bit, um, it's, it's not as informative specifically as far as what they're looking for. And then something else that you want to consider when you're looking at different job markets is the cost of living. So remember in that article how we were talking about 100,000 and all these different kinds of numbers? Well, if you go to Google and you just search either top job markets, that's one way to find some good booming markets but you can also search for cost of living calculator. And this one just happened to be the, the specific one. But with these, these are generally pretty simple to operate. You can just go in here and let's say you're in, I don't know, let's, let's say you're in Denver. And let's say you're making, let's say like 70,000 and then you want to go to California. So 70,000 in Denver, Colorado, moving to San Francisco, California. So this calculator is saying 127,000 to basically live about the same lifestyle that you're living right now. So as you can see, even though that's just an estimate, it's pretty crazy if you want to move to an area like California. If we were to put in, let's say like DC, Washington DC, it's even a little bit less actually than, than San Francisco. So it'd be 103,000. Still a pretty you know, large chunk of change to move there. And again, that's just the equivalent cost of living. So if you want to live better, then you've obviously got to make more money. So definitely consider that if you're gonna move into different markets. Let's say you wanted to make like 80,000, right? So then go in to the calculator and put that amount in to figure out what you actually need to make. Okay, and then you'll have a much better idea. Be really careful about some of these companies in different areas. Sometimes companies aren't willing to pay the difference of cost of living, especially in a place like California. They see it as a benefit that you're living there, right? So they're, they're using that to their advantage to lure you in and then they'll pay, they might pay you less. So be very careful and make sure you stick to your guns if you're gonna negotiate and just keep in mind the cost of living difference. So some other kinds of things that you can negotiate into deals as well when you're talking to different companies are things like move packages or sign-on bonuses. These can help as far as offsetting costs and depending on the company and the size of the company and things like that, the packages can vary. It also depends on your position, right? If you're a director, you're probably going to get offered more. So it's just something to keep in mind. But I hope this has all been informative and helps you in your job search if you're looking to switch markets. And specifically in cybersecurity, there's a lot of jobs out there. A lot of different markets are booming. And just really stick to your guns and get something good. All right. Thanks for stopping by. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.